Good afternoon, everybody. Fusion Phil here with JitCAD Cam. This week on Workflow Wednesday, we're going to go ahead and cover how to do gang style holding inside of Fusion 360. But before I do, if you guys want to support this channel, don't forget to like, comment down below if you like this content or any content you want to see, as well as subscribe to the channel to get the latest update on this content. You could also purchase your Fusion 360 from us as an Autodesk authorized reseller. And we do offer support packages to go with that, that I will remind everybody, both Fusion and our support packages are on sale right now until the end of the month. Now, keep in mind, those prices are going up at the end of the month substantially. So it is your last chance to lock in those prices for the next year. So let's go ahead and dive into this. So what is a gang style tool holder? Well, as you can see here, I do have this model for representation is what we are doing is ganging multiple tools together, right? So as you can see here is I have my very first tool in this guy here. Then we have a second tool and then we have a third tool and they're all kind of mounted in a cluster and you could have four, you could have 10, you could have two. Really, that's going to come down to the scenario that you're doing. But the idea is, is that we are adding more capability to our machine if we ran out of pockets on our turret or B, we are speeding up our cycle time by not actually doing full tool changes and being able to quickly jump between things, kind of like a Swiss machine. So as you can see, my first tool here could be a spot drill. A second tool pocket here could be a drill. And then my third tool is kind of that idea of using a boring bar, right? And we could jump across these at any time and be able to very quickly reference between them. Now, what we're going to do in the world of Fusion is we are going to jump over to a part that I've already had programmed, right? Hollywood magic here. And we are going to walk through posting out something just to start with and review that code, right? So I'm gonna go ahead in and I'm gonna post process this. I'm using a FANUC turning post. However, you may be using a Haas post, something of that nature. And these variables should be in there. And if they're not, feel free to reach out to us. We can add those in if needed. Again, link down below so you guys can reach out to us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna post the standard G code as if I was running a normal turning center, right? No gang style tool holding. And if we go through and we review, what you're seeing here is we have our tool number call out, and from there, we have our tool changes and things to be able to spin around and grab these different tools and go in and machine our part, right? So from that, what we're actually going to do is we're gonna make some modifications here. So we're not gonna do anything in the post processor, which is great. What we're really gonna do is we're gonna actually edit our tooling, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna edit my very first tool. I'm not gonna edit the tool path, of course. We're gonna go in and we're gonna edit the tool. And now with that, we're gonna go over to the post process window. Now, to understand a little bit of what's going on here is you're possibly new to Fusion and what we're trying to do is we're trying to tell it either a pocket number and then a offset number, or in this case, because this is a drill bit or like an end mill, there would be a length and diameter setting, right? So what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna leave the number one for everything we do. We're gonna truly treat this as if it's pocket one, right? Now, my length offset for my very first tool could still be number one, right? Pretty standard that your tool number, your length and diameter are all the same number, right? And then from a turret side of things, again, we're using a gang style holder. So what we need to do is not actually officially do tool changes. And how we do that is by plugging in either a 103 or a 104. Now, based on your machine and what you guys are doing, 103 and 104 is either being on the X positive side of the machine or the X negative side of the machine, right? So before I go to into an example, I am gonna remind you guys, don't forget to turn off your live tooling here when using a gang style holder. This is very important. So I do wanna put that pro tip in there for you. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit accept and then let's look at the idea of X positive versus X negative. Well, the idea is, is that my tool post will either be over here on the X positive side of my actual machine coming in X negative, or I'll be on the X negative side coming in X positive. Now, I wish I could tell you which 103 or 104 is the right one for you. I'm always backwards. Doesn't matter what I plug in there, it's gonna be backwards to what I need, right? So just remember 103 is positive or negative, 104 is opposite, right? So let's go to our second tool, right? So pretty standard, when we programmed our part here, we just went down the list and it sequ sequentially numbered everything, right? So this is now tool number two. Well, that's not true for our case. We actually wanna do tool number one, 
but I want to set a different offset for tool one or pocket one, right? So because we're calling a pocket one, this is now the second tool on pocket one, right? So I, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go up by a multiple of 10 personally. Now you can go up in whatever multiple you want, check your controller. Most controllers accept up to 200 work offsets. Again, if I had 12 pockets, 10 probably wouldn't be a good idea, right? And that might be where you come in and you say, okay, now this guy is going to be, you know, 110 or, you know, whatever you plug in here, just remember at your controller, you do have to set an offset in that number. So again, we're going to plug in that 103 or 104 here. Again, this is a drill bit, so we don't want live tooling turned on. And then we're going to go to our next actual tool path. So we went to our next tool here. We go to post process. Again, this is going to be pocket one. You will notice this is now a boring bar. It doesn't have length and diameter and only has compensation offset. So again, we're going to go up by another 10 personally. That's the way I like to do it. And we're going to set our turret position to 103. So let's go ahead and accept and let's go ahead and post this out. So now with posting this out, what you're going to see is we now have that ability to create our tool call out with a pocket number T01, right? Pocket one. And then we're going into tool offset one. But now when we go down to our drilling procedure, we are now going to tool or pocket number one, and we're going to offset 10, right? So again, this is an M1 function here so that we could actually option stop our way through this and make sure that we have the right tool in. Again, we're gonna go for one and 20 and then do our boring cycle, right? Now, keep in mind inside of Fusion 360, the way it is set up, we can also use G53 to actually set a position so we're not going all the way home and coming all the way back into our part. And how you can do that is you could actually, upon post-processing, if you know roughly where that position is, is I would recommend doing safe retracts based on G53. And then what we could do is we could plug in just about any number in here that we want. Again, keep in mind when we're posting this out, we are coming from like home position up here in the back of your machine or the front of your machine, and then negative from that point, right? So it's not from the front of your part out, we're actually working from home position back. So you do need to be a little bit careful. We wanna make sure we're clearing our tools for that slide to be able to slide over, and we're not smashing into anything. But as you can see again, that G53 Z negative 20, right here, ready to rock and roll. Now for you Haas guys, again, same kind of concept works perfectly the same. We're going to go in and we're going to edit. I'm not going to edit this tool pad or this pre actual, I apologize. I'm getting mixed up with my words, guys. So as you can see, I did edit this post and the lingo is right here inside the post as to what's happening. Again, based on our gang style numbers, we're at turret 103, turret 104. Oh, we keep sliding over when I try to highlight that for you. But here's our turret 103. Here's our turret 104. Again, X positive versus X negative. Now, I'm also gonna show you that if you go to the website, you'll see this actually listed here in the description as well. And when you select your post processor, it is also listed over here on the right. So if I wanted to go ahead and swap out to a Haas turning style post, as you can see here, it's listed here as well. Again, this is just the basic Haas turning post processor. Again, you have safe retract positions that you could set as well. And upon posting out this code, you will see again, T011, T0 or T110. So we have no leading zero in the Haas post. And then T120, right? Same kind of outcome, whether it be Haas or Fanic or whatever control you're using, you could always get here to get this set up. So with that being said, guys, this concludes our workflow Wednesday. As always, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You know myself over here at JITCAD Cam. Feel free to reach out to me down below if you guys have any questions. And as always, have a great rest of your day.